nine factors. And Jack and I were amazed because naturally, instinctively, we did all nine of those factors without even knowing what was in the book. So, and talk about God being good to you. My book is trending and it has for the last year with Dr. Kelly Turner's book on Amazon.com, which is kind of neat because yes. mine is just a story of just me and she has story of several people um, and what they did and most of them did do the same thing and one of the main things that the people did was not give their power away to someone else there you go and and then the other big one of course was a change of diet I mean if you're in a, a in a dis-ease and you need to do a hundred percent you no cheating it's easier to do it a hundred percent if you're gonna cheat it just makes it harder That's just hundred right. percent take care of your body so yeah. um, I want to say something about that choosing. So this is my cartoon and my motto, choose wisely. KYW, especially to the ladies out there, know your worth. We won't have a cure for disease until we first have a cure for greed. Mm -hmm. Okay? So everything that this lady just said here is absolutely true. We suffer from something in this country called the white coat syndrome. We were trained from babies, from little kids, to believe that that man in the white coat was our savior. Well, he's not. Jesus is. But aside from that, that white coat will end up most likely killing you. This is what I tell people. They are there for emergencies because God forbid you get into an accident, right? I had an accident a year ago. I needed to go. I tell everyone they are only there for emergencies and they can and most likely will save your life. So, but if you use them for your daily walk, you're going to be in trouble, guys. Okay? So just know that. So beautiful lady, tell everyone who you are. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Mary Teresa Weil, and um, I just wanted to say that um, Paula, we go back a long way. We go back many, many, many years, good friends. And I wanna say that I, how it all kind of started was, um, I have a networking group of women, and uh, Paula was thinking about writing a book, and she's been saying that for a, a little while, I wanna write a book, and then she said, she was a little nervous about it, but what she did was she practiced on us, yeah. um, people that she could trust, and she did, and then she went with it. And yeah, she, I said it out loud. I yeah, said, I'm going to this write this it. book, and once you say it out loud to a group of people, really your 75% chances goes higher mm -hmm. once you verbalize, ver right. verbalize it. And, and we were very supportive of you. And then um, when you called me that day to say, hey, I woke up in the morning, um, what do you think? Uh, let there be help, like a light bulb went off on right, your head. Right, right. And what do you say you help me with that and uh, be on a, a team? And I graciously said yes right away. I didn't even think about it because I know Paula, I trust Paula, and I love her, and I know whatever she's going to do, she puts her whole heart and soul into everything. So I'm so proud to be part of this Let There Be Health conference and uh, taking the journey with you, Paula. Oh, I love you too, Mary Teresa. We really did go back. Like I, I wanted to surround myself with really powerful people, uh, and I, I chose uh, Deborah because we've always had phenomenal conversations and we were always on the same page about things but she also can write a mean letter when you need one written <laughs> I might need your services <laughs> and Mary very Teresa very you know diplomatically. very <laughs> diplomatically mean. yes a diplomatic letter but and and Mary Teresa you know you want to surround yourself with people that you really trust because you know we are talking about sensitive things here and um, it, it we, we've met once a month for the for the year so this was a year in yeah. the making you know we and we all put our heart and soul into this and you know all i know is my intentions are so pure for that day what i want to happen that day that nothing but good can happen there because you know basically it's a free event um if if you're not doing anything on november 3rd where you want to be is saint anthony of Padua's <laughs> hall between one and five because we have amazing speakers coming i have a i have somebody who's going to be talking about uh, being on pharmaceuticals. In fact, I hope that she calls in. She might be one of the call-ins okay. today if she gets a chance. Okay. Um, I, and she's going to talk about how she would, the, the conventional people had her on medications for over 15 years, and it was something natural that helped her get off of all of that. And I also have a gal who's going to give a testimonial about um, 
the conventional doctors wanted her to have a heart transplant, not heart surgery, a heart okay. transplant. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. This is Frankenstein stuff as far as I'm okay. concerned. And you know what? Her, her gut instinct was telling her no. And so she went and just like me, did her own research. And it's funny how the similarities are there. Okay, we got a phone call. We have That's a phone great. Call, and then I'll read your poem. Okay. Hello, phone caller. Hi. Is this Danita? No, this is Sarah. Oh, hi, Sarah. How are you? Hi, Sarah. Um, I, I may be late to the party here, but I was calling about someone who's going to be at your upcoming conference? Yes. So, uh, Peter Sheridan, Therapeutic <laughs> Touch. Oh, yes. We're Good excited that you. Peter's going to be there. Yes. Good for you. So, um, I've recently been seeing Peter, and I cannot say enough about him. He is fantastic, crazy fantastic, magical, and he's helped me greatly in a short period of time. Beautiful. Yes, yeah, Sarah, thanks for that call in because we, we've had experience with Peter also. Yes. My husband um, goes to, to Peter and uh, he's got like little aches and pains in his legs that it was only Peter was able to help him with. So yeah, P Peter absolutely has a magic touch. There's no doubt about it. And wonderful karma and, and just a great guy. So apologies if I came in the middle of a nope, not no, no, not at all. Not at all. Not at Thank all. you for calling, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Beautiful. Okay. As, okay. Well, I highly recommend Peter Sheridan. Thank you. As a matter of fact, okay. if I could just take a moment and tell you that Peter Sheridan is my life partner, and I'm very, very proud to let you know that he relieves chronic pain without prescriptions and without surgery. Mm. It's all by it's touch. Beautiful. The name mm. of his business is Peter F. Sheridan Therapeutic Touch, and that's exactly what he does. He relieves pain, he helps with limited range of motion through um, manual manipulation um, with the body's muscles, tendons, and nerves. So everybody knows about chiropractors and they go and get their um, skeletal, you know, their bones adjusted, but nobody really talks too much about tendons, muscles, and nerves, and those are the things that actually hold up the bones. So oftentimes people don't know where to go to actually have relief from those kinds of things and they cause everything from lower and upper body um, back pain to carpal tunnel-like symptoms to sciatic-like symptoms to hip pain, headaches, calf cramps, um, jaw, you know, TMJ symptoms, ischemia, but everything's about a dysfunctional, um, I'm sorry, I, I was going to say dysfunctional gait patterns and stuff like that, but it's all about postural distortions, which you create within six weeks. So he actually corrects postural distortions that create pain in the body as a result of those things. I, I just can't say enough about him, but apparently Sarah... Sarah knows. And I want to say, too, yeah. You said it yeah. much better than I did. Well, you know, I've had a lot, I've had a lot more practice. <laughs> and I want to say, too, my husband also uses Peter and uh, my son. And I, I tell you what, it's, he is a miracle, I have to say. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, okay, Sarah. Well, thank you for taking my call. Beautiful. Thanks, Sarah. So, okay, take care. Um, I want to say something about what you were saying about the heart, and then I want to read your poem. Okay. Okay. So Dr. Joel Furman, he's a good friend of mine for over 20 years. He's amazing. He's one of the smartest, smartest medical doctors in this country. He's all natural now. He's unbelievable. He wrote a book. He was on my show with his book for, about heart disease. My dad is in his book, Eat to Live. He cured my dad of diabetes back in the day after shooting insulin for over 20 years. Okay, What he said in this book, I could not believe because I never thought about them lying to you about your heart. Here you go in and you, they're telling you you need heart surgery, you're going to believe it. Can you imagine that? Yeah. That was the first I really understood that even that could be false. Crazy, right? Crazy. Crazy, so, yeah. all right. I wanna read Paula's poem. It's called Guided Cure. So let's talk about the medical field. Whatever you tell me, my lips will be sealed. Most doctors and nurses are governed by this. They can practice medicine without any risk of losing their license for letting you know this pill they are giving is killing us so. They, the test they are pushing, you really don't need. By scaring you now, they've planted the seed. You see, my dear friend, they're told what to say. Their license is threatened. It can be taken away. For you to be healthy, it's not just your food. Your thoughts should be stable to control your good mood. 
25 years ago, I was really sick. The meds would have killed me for sure. I researched myself and prayed to the Lord, and together we did find a cure. My guest here tonight has a story to tell for all of us skeptics out to hear. Without her own faith and learning the truth, she may not have lived one more year. Her name's Paula Biger. Her hubby is Jack. He stood by her side until now. The love that they share has kept them so strong they can handle all that God will allow. She was told she couldn't live without the surgery she'd be given, instead a bag she'd be wearing for life. She prayed to the Lord to show her the truth to comfort her grief and her strife. Her book, Guided Cure, is a story of hope, smiled at her doctor, walked away, and said, nope. <laughs> if you're looking to find what the key to life should be, it's all up to you, friend, because you own the key. God is good all the time, especially when faith is in play. All the time, God is good on any given day. So that was yours, and you know I had I That's had written great. for you. Oh, I love it. I, okay. I, I have it in, it, yeah. you, you um, put it in plastic yes, and everything. Yeah. That's so, great. That's for you. Um, so yeah, so let's talk. Do you want, do you guys want to talk a little bit about first what's on your papers? Go ahead, Mary. Okay, let's talk okay. about whatever you want to share. Okay. The floor um, is yours. Well, um, First of all, me and my husband, Larry, just celebrated our 30-year wedding anniversary. Thank you. We went to Aruba, so it was really, really nice. We went there on a honeymoon, so <laughs> love you, Larry, if you're listening. Um, anyway, I'm also a, uh, a real estate agent um, with Keller Williams Premier. Um, we're just opening up in, we're going to be opening up here in Robbinsville shortly. Uh, right now, we're uh, at on Nottingham Way, so if anybody is interested in stopping by and learning more about Keller Williams Premier, you know, be happy to talk to you. Um, also, I'm involved with um, St. Gregory the Great Church um, with dogs. Uh, it's called the Golden Halo, and I have a therapy dog um, who is a golden retriever. Um, I started with um, Father McLean, who was our pastor at St. Gregory the Great. Um, I had told him when my puppy was a little, when she was really small, um, I said, I always wanted a therapy dog. And he said, well, why don't we do something like this? Why don't we do something for the church and do something for the children, anybody that has disabilities? And so I do. We have now 13 dogs um, with us that we, that we, you know, everybody has their own dog, but we're all either a comfort dogs or they have therapy dogs. And we all go to St. Greg's the first Saturday of every month. Uh, it's called a sensory mass for people with um, disabilities. Um, it's a low lighting mass, um, low music. And uh, the children that go there, it's, it's pretty remarkable. Uh, one mom said to us that their son was afraid of dogs, but now that they're getting a dog. So it's, it's pretty remarkable. Um, so I'm ex really excited about that. I'm doing that now three years. Um, and also, I must say that I'm going to play. I know. We're, we're yes. <laughs> we got Hollywood um, with us, too. And you know, who, you know yeah. who, who's Jean doing the play, too. You, she's been on your show before. Janine right? Verducci. Yeah, Jeanine oh, Verducci. you're in Janine's play. Yes. I love her. Yes. I love her. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, the Tapestry of Motherhood. Yes, yes. 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 Um, in March. It's yeah, going to. Cool. Yeah, so we're yeah, excited yeah. about that. We're it's all going to have to go see that play. <laughs> Where is it? It's actually at the Valley. It's at the Bo um, Valley Bore ballroom in um, Burlington County and it's going to be um, March 23rd, 24th like that weekend yeah, yeah, yeah. so um, stay tuned <laughs> I'm a little nervous about it but it'll be fun no you might have to come back on the Jerry Petito show with, with uh, yeah, Janine, Janine yes, we'll set the, it up. the yeah, crew yeah. Yeah. We'll set it up. thank you she was on one of my shows, we went and had dinner together and she said would you want to like be in the you know be in the show I cracked up <laughs> I said no, listen I I can't, I'm not an actress, okay? <laughs> I couldn't do a role without being me. So real actors and actresses mm -hmm. can really, they're amazing. She probably wanted somebody just like you, Joe. No, yeah, yeah. No, she didn't. She wanted somebody nice and sweet. Oh, and really nice. Calm. Uh, calm. Like, no. It's about Italian heritage. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm the non-Italian girlfriend. Sweet and calm. You're the non-Italian girlfriend. Yes. So I play her best She's friend. She's the one non-Italian. Yes. So, so go ahead. So that's it. I'm I'm right. just excited about all all the things that I'm doing, and uh, and I just I'm just excited uh, again about the Let There Be Health conference, and I'm looking forward to it. So beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful. So, what would you like to say? Well, I would like to say that I have um, worked in healthcare, 
as a social worker for decades and did, spent most of my adult career in Tucson, Arizona for 32 years, of which many of those years were, do, again, doing social work for the elderly. Um, returned to New Jersey. I'm a Jersey girl. I was raised in New Jersey. I returned here about nine years ago and worked at the state as the assistant director of the Office of Training and Professional Development for the Department of Children and Families. So we basically trained all of the 7,000 people that are in that department. So everything that goes into putting on any kind of training or workforce development, we did. And um, I was responsible for that. Um, but I am working per diem for, as a social worker again, as a care manager for Spring Point at Home. It is a home health agency under the arm of Spring Point Senior Living. They have eight different continuing care retirement communities around the state as well as affordable housing communities too. They're nonprofit. Um, and I'm looking for a full-time job <laughs> in case somebody wants it. I'd like it not necessarily to be care management, but anyway, um, so <laughs> I have my hand in healthcare in many different areas as uh, I mentioned earlier. Okay, cool. Well, you know, Deborah, we, we all shed and I seems to, for me, every seven years, I create something else in my life. So oh, well, that, yeah. me too. I, I it, do too. Yeah, you know, we're, yeah. It, it, just, it just naturally happens. So, you know, just like put that positive energy towards whatever's next, Absolutely. no matter what it is, and just open up that porthole and let it all come in because nothing but good will ever happen Thank for you, you, Deborah. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I was telling Jerry earlier my bachelor was, was in radio and television communications, so it's been a very long time since I've been in a studio. Huh. You know what I think? <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, the whole every seven years thing, maybe we should get her on Hamilton Radio. That's right. Have her own, oh, have her own show. Have her own show. Yeah. I would love that. Absolutely. Yeah. About health care and stuff. We'll talk, yeah. Right? Thank you. <laughs> I mean, Thank imagine you. that coming out of this. Wow, that yeah. would be something. Right? I never would have thought about that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because you like working for yourself. I could walk here. I live in. Yeah. I, I live in Robbinsville. Oh, uh, we have hey. to do this. Come on, we have to do this. <laughs> we'll talk, girlfriend. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So, um, tell us who the guests are going to be. At. Who are the speakers? I'm going to be All here right. with my table set up. And yeah. also going to be mention speaking. the other two members of our planning committee. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, Danita is hoping to call in and because she's also, Danita Stevens is also one of the speakers. Okay. And she, um, I'm going to let her tell her story. I don't want to take anything away, away from her story, but she also was in this year's This Is My Brave in Philadelphia, okay. which is really, uh, Jack and I went to it, it was really cool. It's all about mental health. And the it was such a powerful show. And Danita, um, she's basically, she's a transplant from Texas. So she's wow. a Texas girl living here in Jersey. Does she still have the accent? Yeah, a little oh, bit. Oh, I love that. A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> and, and basically, after she experienced This Is My Brave, they asked her to be the part of the production of a, This Is My Brave in 2019 right here in Mercer Beautiful. County. So that's something else that we can look forward to. And we also have Ann Laurie Fracciacoli. Did I say that right? Mm -hmm. Fredicholi, Fredicholi, I got to get this right before <laughs> before I'm up on the you stage. <laughs> Fredicholi, I, I even phonetically put it somewhere, and I, every once yeah. in a while I practice it because I keep messing up. I don't want to mess up anybody's name, you know. But um, Anne Laurie was, is great for our team too because she is the organized one of all of us. There's no doubt about it that she keeps us organized. Mm -hmm. So, and Anne had some. She has a pet that she's dealing with t right now, and so she oh, needed okay. to be home with her pet. So okay. that's why she's not here. Yeah, okay. she's performing health care acts on her cat or with her cat. Yeah, and it's funny because I did connect um, Ann Laurie yesterday with one of our community sponsors, and her name is, um, I was just with her too, Marsha, thank you, Marsha Manuni, and sh she has such a cool business. What she does is she is a cat medium. so oh, that's she can, so cool. Yeah, it, it is so cool. <laughs> and you know what she's told me, that she's there with to help you with your pet, either alive if you can't, you know, have a conversation with them, but she can tell you what they're feeling and everything, and even when they pass over. But when she's with clients sometimes, 
people come in too. And that's how she realized mm. she even had these powers or whatever you want to call it. So, um, and you know, pets are a big part of our lives. That yeah. I mean, the percentage of people who have pets is really high. So basically, let there be health. It, we do the gamut. We go from, you know, from your pets to your children to any kind of health issue that can go across your path, all the way up to we have um, Embracing Hospice that's going to be there, which is also, you know, that's part of life. I mean, dying is part of life, hospice, you know? Yes. So that's a, a very important because a, yes. a lot of people don't realize what hospice really is. They think it's just, you know, end of life stuff. But no, you, so I'm glad that we have um, Embracing Hospice going to be there. I have really interesting people coming. I have a girl, her name is Kristen Pirelli, and the name of her business, I love the name of her business. Her business is called A Mother's Gut Instinct. I love that. Yeah, and I basically she, 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 She's got a great story that I want her to be able to tell, too. But, um, you know, all of our, not all of it, a high percentage, 90-plus percentage of your immune system is in your gut. So, and that's what she deals with. She helps balance everybody's gut. With, so, and she does it naturally. I, I, you know, I've been doing, if anybody wants to go on Let There Be Health Facebook page, I've been doing these fun uh one and a half to three minute videos and when I did the video with Kristen we were in her beautiful kitchen opened up that uh, refrigerator door and it was the best looking refrigerator I've seen beyond my own refrigerator nothing but vegetables was jumping out of there she even had a pot of bone broth that she just got finished making and bone broth is m amazing for your gut so uh, okay. Little by little, everybody's learning that it, if, if it comes to your health, it's the same as it was 2,000 years ago. It's your diet and how you move your body. And one other thing is how you think. I just put up on um, my personal Facebook page uh, that a, a, negative, a negative thought can kill you faster than a bad bug. And that's the truth. Right. You can eat all the good food. You can do everything everything right nutritional wise but if you're a, a, somebody who's negative all the time and y yep. you're gonna you're gonna bring those energies right to you and no matter how good you eat it's not going to help you so I want to touch base on what you just said there so <clears throat> most of my uh, audience out there knows I'm a nutritional health coach I've been studying nutrition for close to 30 years I learned something when I got certified in this a few years ago, I learned something I never, ever thought about. What Paula just said. Um, they did a survey. I, I'm not sure what the country was. Don't quote me on this. I think it was Italy, okay? And there were two towns very close to each other within 15 minutes. One town, everybody was healthy, living well into their 90s and 100s. But the other town, everybody was dying at a very, very early age, all different diseases, cancer. So they sent someone there for a year to do some research on both towns. The food was the same. What they found was this. The town where the people were getting sick, they were all angry all the time, not very close family, none of mm. that. Okay, they didn't work together, they didn't eat together. But the town where everybody was living to a longer age, they were all family oriented. They ate meals together. They played together. They stayed together. They worked together. Big difference. Mm -hmm. So I, I agree 100% with what you just said there. Yeah, and, it, and the other thing, because I just heard something about the water. Can you water, guys, the wait, water can you guys hear me out there? Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Water. Water is really important. Yep. And we do have a water girl that's going to be there that can talk to you about the importance of water. Um, uh, so. You know, I think, I don't know what the percentage of our body is water, but it well, might as well like be good good water like that you're putting in there. It's water. Least, you know, oh because yeah, they put fluoride in the water. Yeah, you yeah, you yeah. know, fluoride is not anything that you really want. You really don't want it from your dentist either. Yeah. And, That's right. you, and you better ask, if they, you see them coming up to you and putting something in your mouth, ask them what it is, because the last time I was at the dentist, I was they, uh, just to get my teeth cleaned, and she came with this little Q-tip. I'm like, yep. what is it? What is it? And she said, it's fluoride. I'm like, no, no, no. Right. I don't want fluoride in my mouth. Now That's they exactly do that? Right. That happened recently? Yeah. yeah. yeah that was, that was like within the year. Still? Within the year. 
And then they like wrote it on my um, oh my they wrote it on my chart that probably that I was a problem the patient. <laughs> you are a problem <laughs> you patient. The I love it's, when they do that. I don't even go to the listen. Forget it. It's even hard to find. You can find toothpaste without fluoride, but you have to look really carefully, and it will say right on the box without fluoride. Oh, no you fluoride. know where we get ours is right at. I don't. They call it a, the Mandir over here. Okay. They have neem toothpaste there. We just take a trip every whatever and right. it's first off it's that beautiful place but they have a store there that is open to the public and they have neem well, toothpaste that's from India you, but I want to tell you something about that it's not 100% listen to this my daughter got in touch with me and said mom there's a there's a company out there called pure haven she was very interested in selling their products I said not until we really researched this mm. We drove five and a half hours away to their lab we even went behind the scenes they let us watch them make everything we were there all day. Pure Haven, my daughter sells it if anybody's interested because it's 100% pure. Mm -hmm. Everything about it, okay? All organic, unbelievable stuff. Uh, my daughter's name is Tiffany Shimko, S-H-I-M-K-O. You can get her on Facebook or get in touch with me. This is vital. I do not promote anything unless I believe in it 100%. And no matter what products are out there, there's always something off with it. One little thing, this little thing, 100%. Mm -hmm. Here's why I respect this company the most. Well, not, aside from that, of course. We met their workers. It's a mom and pop thing now. Do you know that they don't have machines packaging their stuff? They hire people, real people, that are counting, that are putting in, that are sealing the... It's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. I was crying in the lab. I'm like, this is so beautiful. What's the so, name of the company again? It's called Pure Haven. Um, get in touch with my daughter, Paula. Tiffany. I have her right Okay, yep, yeah, yeah. Shimko. All right, and she would love to hear from all of you out there. If you, you don't tell want to give her, us her number? Um, no, I don't even know. Listen, her number, 201 207. That's all I know. Yeah. It's not that I won't give you her number. Get, get me on Facebook. Get her on Facebook. Okay. Uh, Tiffany Shimko, S H I M K O. You'll find her on Facebook. Just okay. message her. Here's the thing if anyone out there messages her and tells them it's because you heard about her through her mom's radio show, we're going to give you a discount. Okay? I, I give you my word on that. Mm -hmm. So the products are unbelievable. So what else would you like to talk that's about? Good, that's well, a good tip. Oh, and yeah. Dr. Eric, he's going to be there. Oh, Dr. Eric, yes, he's, he's one I of the speakers. Him. Yeah, yes. you know, Dr. Eric, I, 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 it's almost given me away my introduction to him when on that day, but every do, Dr. Eric and I bump into each other all the time yes. at, at any kind of health fair, and yeah. I bump into him, and we have such great conversations because, again, just like with Deborah, we're on the same page yeah. about health care. I, I bumped into him at the Oktoberfest. We were both set up there, and he and I invited him tonight, but he was too busy. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I would have loved for him to pop yes. in. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, and I've seen, seen Dr. Eric speak before, too, so I know he's a great speaker and that everybody will enjoy what they hear from him. Um, I also have, I have one true miracle story that mm -hmm. I'm really excited about. We, ju we just pu uh, put uh, Bill Sheehan on, and I'm, uh, all I'm going to tell you is that, it, like, all these testimonials are about five minutes long, and his five minutes gave me uh, an edification that not just one miracle can happen in your life, many miracles can happen in your life. So. Uh, his story is quite amazing, great and I also have. Really? I'm really excited about having Riley Coat, the uh, and he's a former Philadelphia Flyer. And what Riley Coat uh, is the founder and president of Hemp Heals Foundation, and he also has an Athletes for Care um, initiative. And uh, how I met Riley was about seven months ago, in uh, at a Chamber of Commerce event. He was the speaker, and I never heard anybody in a public forum speak about cannabis the way he did. Oh, cool. And it's, uh, you know, he gets into the cannabinoids and the endocannabinoid system and how we have the receptors for every single one of our organs that goes with each CBD, different, like, you know, there's CBR, CBD, C, you know, the, we fear something that we don't know about. And he so intricate, 
he did it so beautifully that you felt like you understood it, but then you couldn't repeat it. But he's going to be coming with fascinating information because when I was researching for the book Guided Cure, I didn't use cannabis oil to cure myself, but I've had several com conversations with my husband if, because they scared me, the conventional doctors scare you that you didn't do what they told you to That's do, right. so it's That's gonna right. come back. That's and right. you know, I just put X's all over that because it's not gonna come back. No, and but it would have come back if you listened to them, but go ahead. But if, if it does, mm -hmm. you know, I don't fear it anymore because cancer really, this is the other thing I want people to realize is we've been programmed to fear cancer to, that that's a that it's a death sentence it's not it's just a word it's not a sentence there's so many people there's people right now living with cancer that they can't get rid of where the tumor is or something like that and they're 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 just living their life a beautiful life but just holding the cancer down with the way they eat, the way they think, the way they live their, their lives. I want to say something about that. So I just want to say something that you're probably not going to believe I'm saying. Nobody gets cancer. Nobody gets cancer. We have been born with it. Mm -hmm. Our bodies, from the beginning of time, our bodies produce over 1 million cancer cells a day, guys. Over 1 million cancer cells. Mm -hmm. Here's what happens. When your immune system is healthy, the healthy cells smother the cancer cells, okay? So not only do they smother the cancer cells, that's normal. That's what happens every single day ongoing. That's not like something that just started happening. That's forever, all right? So nobody gets cancer, but what happens is this. Once your immune system breaks down and it becomes acidic, that's when the cancer now can survive. So if you can keep your body alkaline, cancer cannot, cannot, cannot survive in it. Okay, guys? Just understand that. So nobody gets cancer. But I will say this. I don't know anyone today who's had cancer over the last 10 years, who's had chemo or radiation, whose cancer went away and did not come back. I don't really know anyone that that hasn't happened to. Um, it will come back because chemo and radiation will kill off all your healthy cells that are there to smother the cancerous cells. Okay, guys, just know that. So. If you well, can do this. Yeah, well, you know what? Yep. Uh, I, I just saw this. This is why I remember his name. Otto Warburg, he got a Pulitzer Prize for its proof is in the pudding that cancer cannot, oh, absolutely. cannot survive in oxygenated that's blood. That's right. And that's one of the it's therapies the that I did do is, right. is I did ozone therapy, which oxygenates my blood. And I even topped it off with ultraviolet. My blood went through ultraviolet um, light okay. before it went back into me because basically I made my own um, vaccination. But don't let's not, let's no, not no, get no. on let's gonna, not let's not get that. on the vaccinations. The let's thing, not talk but, about that. But 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 I do have somebody coming to that knows all about vaccinations. She's got four kids. N none of them are vaccinated. Yeah, my grandkids okay. have not been. My grandson is seventeen. My daughter also speaks on that. She knows more than anyone. Well, your daughter's coming too, right? She's going well, to be at your table. Well, my daughter might be away now, but we'll, I'll know tomorrow. Okay, yeah, I'll yeah. Because I would love for her to be at yes. your table because people are interested in that I now. Know. They want to know. So, um, and she, she would be there with the Pure Haven products as well. So we're working on this. Um, well, but I just want to say this. Listen, everything that Paula is saying here is 100% is truth. We're not giving you any opinions. I want, I want that to be clear because everybody has opinions. We're not giving you opinions. This lady sitting here cured herself. I cured myself. We're giving you facts, okay? So really, if anybody is out there, you know what's sad, Paula? Everyone out there knows someone who's either sick mm -hmm. or who has passed away recently mm -hmm. because of cancer. Right. I just wish they would believe in us enough to really hear what we have to say. Well, you know what? I really think it's changing because seven years ago when this happened to me, I, 
I, you know, I went to the internet. I had other people researching for me. You had to search for it. Now you don't. You know, right now, the truth about cancer is airing. There's two more days left. And I don't know. You know how they do that thing for nine days and every night they put a new one on and then maybe at the end of the week you get to watch them all the whole weekend if you want. But I've been, I've been watching it because I just love hearing information about people who heal naturally from cancer. And um, now I lost my train of thought is why I brought up the oh. truth. Oh, no. No, because the truth about cancer, you can just Google, Google it, and it will all come up. It wasn't like that even seven years How ago. How about t over 25 years ago? I got to go out of the country. I mean, mm -hmm. think about that. Oh, yeah. And they thought I was crazy. Everybody thought I was nuts. Those same people then, especially some in my family that thought I was nuts, <laughs> have all gotten in touch with me when they needed help. That's and that's right. the truth. So yeah. amen to that. Well, you know, and, you, know, and you, you said, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, uh, Deborah. I just wanted to say that it's really true that there is so much more information out there. Uh, but what makes me feel sad is that there are still so many people that are resistant to hearing yeah. anything other than traditional sure. allopathic That's medicine, sure. which yes. again, yeah. I was raised by a medical doctor. He was an excellent medical doctor, an excellent diagnostician, sure. but he too would tell you that there are alternate things that you can do that will enhance your health. So for people that are still sick that I know that won't even broach the subject, because they're too fearful of mm. something that's different. Mm -hmm. I feel sad about that because there's so much other help out there. There's so many other modalities and that's what this conference is about, is letting people see some True. different modalities, hearing different stories, being open to learning about different things and that's really what we're trying to do is make sure that in this community people have access to alternate types of healing modalities and that's what that's Paula's true. goal has been and that's exactly what we're doing so really want you to come out and hear this stuff it doesn't cost a dime right. it's a couple of hours on a Saturday a Saturday afternoon November 3rd in you know this community and come on out with an open mind and just listen and have some fun with us yeah basically our goal is to educate you inspire you and entertain you because right. if i'm going to have an event it's going to be fun it's going to be fun i have there's going to be a photo booth there there's going to be music there i have the williams boys going to be uh the music there in be when the speakers aren't on when you're going around to uh meet all the community partners and um you know everybody has a story everybody there, does. everybody yes. has a story and you know Jack and I have been out in the last year and a half. Phone call? Oh, good. We got a phone call coming in. Let's right. go. Let's go. Oh, I forgot Hello. to say that. Oh, th that we were traveling around. And yeah. Yeah. after I'm done speaking, so many people come up to us, tell us about another family member. And because cancer, one in three women and one in two men are going to have a cancer diagnosis in their lifetime and that is startling statistics mm -hmm. so yeah we're all going to know somebody that's who has right. cancer but you guys can relax because we had it so that's you don't right. have to worry about that's right <laughs> phone call Aww. hello caller hello hi who's calling hi this is Ann Lori Fratacholi. I'm hi. actually from oh, Hi, Ann Health. Hi, ladies. Hi, hi Ann. Hi, Lori. And we, we gave you a shout out already, but we're really glad you called in. <laughs> uh, well, I didn't realize that because I have been a little crazy with the cat. Oh. Um, you know, it was the feeding time, and I'm sorry. It's like all new to me feeding cat with feeding tube. So, you oh. know, I'm through a feeding tube. So, prayers for Sam, and go, Sam, go. Oh. So, I just wanted to call and say I checked the numbers a few hours ago, and there are. About 175 people registered on Eventbrite to attend the conference. Oh, wow. Wonderful. A astronomical. It's amazing, really, because think of all the others that yeah. haven't registered that are going to be there. So right. if you want to get there, get there early and assure your seat, that's for sure. Yes, and, yes. Um, you know, if you come for nothing else but to get one thing out of it, I encourage everybody to be there. I do, because it's as a result of Paul bringing all of us together that I got to meet... Peter Sheridan. Oh. <laughs> Peter Sheridan therapeutic uh, massage, and I'm going to tell you, he changed my world. Let's see. And you know, I, I got hurt on walking the big dog, you know, and he hurt me. I thought my leg was broken in a thousand places. Went to the orthopedics. I thought it wasn't broken. It was muscular and ligament, etc. That was a Monday. On, he said, if you're not better by Friday, we'll start cortisone shots. I'm like, yeah, I don't think so. There has to be another way, and there was, and. I, you know, 
came to the CP and after two treatments, I will tell you that I didn't even know I was injured. Why these doctors want to push us to just mm -hmm. needles, 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 medicine, 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 I don't know. There are other ways. We have to ask those questions. We have to know what questions there are to be asked, and that's what we're going to learn on November 3rd. So I encourage everybody to come. Just get one thing out of it, and you're going to really walk away. It's going to be a game changer for you. It could be Peter. It could be something that Dr. Bart says. It could be something that Paula says. It could be any of the other community partners. They might just be there for you. So come, listen, enjoy, have fun. And um, if they're not registered on Eventbrite, Larry, Deborah, and I will be at the table, and we will be taking care of them when they enter the door. So we'll be sure that everybody's taken care of. So what did I miss? A lot? Well, I think <laughs> we have to change this conference name now to Peter's Conference. <laughs> <laughs> Peter's Health okay. Tour. I have to honestly say, I, I had no freaking clue what uh, you know, a certified you know, neurological therapist did. But now I do know, and um, it's something we all need to learn, that and so many other things. Uh, you know, as you know, you ladies do know, I even take my dog to a holistic vet in Egg Harbor for mm -hmm. NAET. And mm -hmm. I just met somebody yesterday who took their dog to another vet for the same thing, and what a world of difference for, you know, their dog. So we don't have ten heads. There is some truth to this. It, it, this is really happening out there. So, well, thank you for being that voice and, and loud and shouting it from the rooftops and letting everybody know. And um, we just all need to, we need to do that. So there are a lot of things. Ask the questions. And if you don't know what questions they ask, come and listen, and you'll know what questions to start asking. Thank yeah, well, you. Thank you. You, you, you know what? I, I no, really these feel... doctors tell you what to do. Question them. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, I have a, a flyer that's 21 questions to ask your oncologist. And if they're, some of them are kind of funny, but I'll have those at the conference. Oh, I would love that's those great. questions. Yes, yes, yes. They're at the conference. Uh, you know, and one of the questions is like, would, would you prescribe this to your mother, right. you know, and see what their <laughs> face right. looks yeah. like when they, when they answer you? <laughs> I ask every doctor that. If they are asking me to do something, I say, well, would you have your wife do this or... Right. Your daughter or your yeah. mother or your father, always. Yeah, what and do you know, they say back? Watch, yeah, watch for their body language. It's interesting they some, what they say <laughs> back. Really? Sometimes they the say, mm -hmm. you know, well, I, mm -hmm. I wouldn't do this, I would oh. do this, because they'll okay. give you three different options, and they'll tell you which one, okay. usually, yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I, I just feel really blessed because, you know, at this stage in my life, I... This isn't what this wasn't on my bucket list. No, writing a book wasn't on my bucket list. Doing a, a a health conference was never on my my bucket list. But at this point, I just feel privileged that I'm able to wake up every morning with a passion. That's because right. I want I do want to scream it from the rooftops. We have choices. And see, I don't want to judge people for the choices that they make. But listen to this: if a conventional girl has breast cancer, she fights the good fight, you know, fight like a girl, does everything that the doctors tell her to do, and she dies. She's touted as a hero. She's touted like, you know, she fought the good fight. Now, if something happens to me and I die, they're going to be like, she should have gone conventionally. So I want mm -hmm. both of our choices to be respected. Because why shouldn't my choice be respected? And that's the barrier that I'm trying to change. And the ultimate goal is that, and other people have tried to do this, but maybe it's been shaken up a little bit better now, is that these modalities that we use should be covered by insurances. Yes, That's indeed. the only reason yeah, well, why people don't yeah. go the That's way I right. go. That's right, absolutely. Is because they're, like, and, and I've seen people like, no, it will it'd be cheaper for me to do this. And mm -hmm. you know, I don't like sharing this with many people either, but it wasn't easy to, to do it the way I did. I, you know, there, God did provide there because when I made decisions that, okay, I'm going to do these treatments, I didn't know where the money was going to come from. And then all of a sudden, in really miraculous ways, I talk about it in my book a couple ways, how money just popped up and that was almost to the penny of how much I needed for mm -hmm. the first three months of treatment. So, it, it, you know, you do have to throw some trust out there. And, and that was a beautiful thing of having a diagnosis because at one point, I, I remember sitting in the backyard with Jack and when I made the decision, I'm not having that. I, I, there's no, no, no cell in my body is telling me to have that, that 
life-changing operation. And life got easier once I did that. And once I, I, I came to the conclusion of like, you know, I've had a great life. You know, if I end up on the other side, inter eternal life, I hear it's pretty good. I'm okay <laughs> with that. You know, if you want to take me, take me. And once I did that, oh my God, the, the blessings just poured all over me. I mean, people, I'm not kidding you. When I talk about people who went in my path, it's like, I know people now that I would have never known. Um, because this happened to me, and and I and and because this happened to me, I appreciate every day better too. Mm -hmm. I mean, I appreciate all the little things, things that you didn't appreciate before you, you thought wow. your time was unlimited, right. you know. So, you know, I'm never going to be one of those people said cancer was the best thing that ever happened to me, but it <laughs> it did give me perspective. Right. Yeah. But see, I'm going to touch on that now because I think I can say that was the best thing that ever happened to me. Um, I don't think I would be where I'm at today helping all these people. But again, it's almost 30 years for me. You know, maybe when it's almost 30 years for you, you're going to look back and say, you know what, it was absolutely the best thing that ever happened to me. Right. Because um, I would not have touched so many lives today. I can't even tell you, right, Doc G? We had a woman call in on one of my shows, even with the addiction. We had a woman call in on one of my shows and... <coughs> He can vouch for this, live on my show and said, this show saved her life. Oh, she was going to pick wow. up. She was going to kill herself. Oh, my gosh. She watched one of my shows and didn't do it. Yes? Yes. Wow. So I can say that. You know what I mean, Paula? Yeah. I, um, for me, anyway. It's, for you me. Know, yeah. It, it's just, you know, c cancer. Just even the word, you know. It, it, it scares you to death. But that's because they're making people believe they're getting it. Right. If people really understood it's in your body from birth, they wouldn't be so scared of it. Right. That's why we're mm -hmm. being lied to. Yeah, and they're, they've also shown there's been a lot of research about something happening um, traumatic to you like 10 years before, and you don't realize it. That puts your immune system yes. down. Stress. Which, which uh, stress, yeah. And, you know, basically it, it starts guys. with one cell, and that's then right. they start, they get their own bloodline, and then they start, and that's, that's where right. the tumor comes there from. And go. then wherever the tumor is, that's where you're, you that's go. the cancer you have. But, you know, before it's over, I do want to spot the, the last person that I, I wanted to talk about with the speakers is Dr. Bardis. Do I it. mean, mm -hmm. um, yes, he too was put in my path. In fact, my, my sister gifted me. Uh, my first meeting with Dr. Bardis, and he spent two and a half hours with me, and no other doctor spent that kind of kind of time with me. He wanted to know everything about me. He just he didn't want to know about the diagnosis. He wanted to know about my childhood. He wanted to know if my glass was half empty or half full, and and then he knew who he could treat because he was treating the whole person. And, you know, Dr. Bars, it scares me that he's going to be up on that stage because he's not like any doctor I've ever had. There, I, I, I write about it in the book how the first meeting there was like a little bomb sitting on his desk with an F on it, the F bomb. And that's because <laughs> <laughs> that word flew around there. <laughs> and, great. you know, it's not like any of us have never heard that that word That's before, great. but usually it's not your doctor. <laughs> <laughs> but I did tell him to be himself because that's all that he really could be. And he helped so many wait. people too. He, yeah. uh, you know, what happened to him was uh, 30, he's an MD and 30 years into it, he, you know, saw all this stuff happening with alternatives and everything. He said, let me try some of the alternatives on some of my patients. And then he realized that he's helping the patients alternatively and they weren't getting the bad side effects. And, you know, it turned in, him into a believer, and, you know, the rest of it is history because, you know, he's the, the medical director at um, the Institute of Complementary and Alternative Medicine. And I am so excited that he was the first one to come on board to be the keynote speaker because I did everything around that because Pete, he speaks to scientists and doctors that's around that's the world. That's amazing, yes. And he's going to come I and speak to us. I can't wait to hear us. So yeah, that's going to be too. unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Those are the great. kind of people I love listening to. Yeah. That's cool. Okay, so anyway, ladies, I just want to say, enjoy the rest of the show. Bye, Aunt Lori. Bye, Aunt Lori. Thank you. Oh, oh, yeah, we got another caller. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Aunt Lori. Deborah, Mary Teresa, and Anita. Aw, love you. We have another caller? All right. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Do we have another caller out there? Hello? Hello, how are you? Good. Who's calling? 
Peter Sheridan. <laughs> oh, hi, Peter. <laughs> hi, Peter. Welcome to the Peter Show. Welcome. <laughs> I really appreciate it. It's very nice of you ladies. And actually, I'm wound up to uh, put a plug in for you. I want people to know just how hard everybody's worked over the past year to make this happen. It didn't happen over it, overnight. Everybody put some effort into this. There's a lot of thought, a lot of planning, and a lot of work. So thank you all very much for all your dedication. And I wouldn't mind putting a plug in for Deb Perry's radio show. <laughs> oh, see? Yes! There it is, baby! Yay! <laughs> You're making ha Hamilton Radio very happy. <laughs> you heard it here first on the Jerry Petito Show. Yes. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Okay, well. Thank, thank you, Peter. Thank you, Peter. I, Peter, I want your autograph when I meet you, please. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I'll All right. have yours as well. All right, darling. Aww. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Thank Peter. Thank you. Bye now. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> That's great. That is funny. Yeah. <laughs> That's so cute. <laughs> That's so yeah, good. then we have a lot of community partners um, that are going to be there that you can go to their table. They're going to be a wealth of information. I have Jersey Girl Cafe is going to be there. She's going to have some healthy food for us if we get hungry. There's going to be a photo booth there from Memory Makers. What Studios. kind of healthy food? Wait, let's talk about well, that. Well, you know, she <laughs> well, um, she's going to she one of her specialties is the homemade soups that she oh, makes. So delicious. I agree that she's going to, yeah. I, I mean, we really didn't talk about it yet, but okay. you know, I kind of threw like November, that's like soup time. Yeah. Like we're, Jack and I are very big soup people. Yes, we've I had been, soup today. Yeah. Homemade soup. Yeah. You know, the, this is such great soup time and you just, you know, all the vegetables and yeah. you know, we go to our, in fact, we just came back from our farm today. Yeah, I've had, I've I had a great there. day. Yeah. I started with yoga. We ran to the farm. I got my hair done and then I came here. So I had a full day, but th there's nothing more invigorating than leaving an organic farm. You smell fantastic from just when I was picking flowers while Jack was getting all the vegetables, but all the bugs and they're, they're all there with you, but they don't bite you or anything. They're just like, go ahead, you want a flower, take it. And then when you leave, you just smell like the earth, you know? So, and that's good for your whole body and healing because they're even talking about yes. that grounding when you put your bare Absolutely. feet on the ground it gives you the, the the energies because we are all just a big thing That's of right. energy I, um, I'd like to um, give a shout out to uh, Jack Jack is an extraordinary <laughs> cook and as Paula said earlier, she has, he has been with her every step of the way, and he single-handedly has, I believe, kept her well-fed, driven her to and from all of her treatments and That's doctor's true. appointments, been the uh, television man for all of her videos, little videos, yes. and just countless other things. I mean, that's like the tip of the iceberg, but he, um, he's quite the chef, he's quite the cook, and he does everything organic, and he makes everything homemade, mm -hmm. and I hear um, rumors about possibly a cookbook that Jack might be making one day, which I personally would like to have. A <laughs> wow, Jack, I'm well, a he... vegan chef, honey, we could co-author this. I have oh, to say something great. about Jack as well. He's always smiling, always. Yes. he's awesome, and when Paula came to my house to do our little video clip for the conference, she laughed and said, Jack usually does this. <laughs> yeah, 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 we did a selfie yes. stick, but it worked, it, it worked. worked. <laughs> we made it that was work. so funny. And he runs, uh, with Paula, of course, Our Town Magazine, so yes. he works tirelessly That's right. on many, many different fronts. Yes. Thanks for everything. Yay, Jack. Thank Woo! Tiger. He's awesome. I just want to say that Jack is the happiest guy in Hamilton Square. <laughs> <laughs> He's surrounded by these beautiful Aww, yeah, oh, come on. He's too. married to you, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I couldn't really, I couldn't do... I, Jack always says that I could, but he, I, I told him today, he makes my life so easy, and, and that is a gift. That's and a I blessing. tell him all the time how much I appreciate everything he does, because I do. You know, in fact, it scares me <laughs> because if it, I go in the kitchen and I open the cabinets, I go, oh, my God, what am I going to do with this stuff? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and Jack has been behind the scenes for Let There Be Health also. Beautiful. So, um, Beautiful. Yeah. And I'd like to mention uh, one of the community partners, 100-plus yeah, yeah. women who care of Mercer County, which I'm involved in also. Oh, yeah. They, um, they, they do fantastic yeah, work for the community. My yes. friend Ellen Fahey co uh, founded it, um, and uh, me along with Maureen Cozy and uh, Ellen, and um, we, we 
actually Elizabeth Kelly also, we're all involved in this. And we've been doing it now for almost a little over two years. And what it is, is we help other nonprofits in Mercer County. We know how very hard it is to get monies um, funded. So what we do is once every three months, um, we meet and we have a meeting and we um, pick a nonprofit in Mercer County and what we do is we there's like we become we're all members that join up and you, you sign a form but basically it's a hundred dollars we give the money right then and there to the people um, you know that are involved um, we've helped so many nonprofits um, already and actually the idea is to get a hundred plus women which means ten thousand dollars right to that nonprofit all at one time and right now we're o almost at six thousand dollars that we gave That's almost beautiful. yeah close to it so we're beautiful. we're just so we meet once um every we meet, meet three uh once every three months um on a monday so um anyway so you can stay tuned to that also it's, yeah, it's yeah, really great a great, great yeah. organization you can yeah. find out more about um 100 women who care of mercer county at let there be health yeah um, let's see, we have, what else? We have Edie's Naturals, who's coming, too. Oh, which yeah, is I love Edie. She was on my... Oh, yeah, she was on yes. your show, too? Yeah, yes, a yeah, long she, time ago. Because her, you know, she yeah, makes... I use her stuff Yeah, she well. started, like... In their kitchen. Yes, and now she's she's doing yeah. really well. I have her, because I have little eggs in my, I have her stuff on my nose with Yeah, that. yeah, and it's all, all yeah. natural. And so, you know, we really tried to touch all the bases that, uh, just to give, uh, the, the the community a resource right. uh, if for for if they're looking for 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 natural stuff because mm -hmm. it it is getting way more popular because everybody's got a horror story I mean I did one video it ended up being a little longer than three minutes because my what I've been told is after three minutes people might get mm -hmm. antsy and so I try to do them all in in three minutes but you know I've had people come to me and looking for me at events to let me know this one fella he uh, found me to let me know and the first thing out of his mouth is you know I lost my my wife six months ago and you know mm. that's a hard conversation mm. to have you know sorry and all that and he goes no no I, I just wanted to tell you it wasn't the cancer that killed her it was the treatments that killed her oh, absolutely and you know it was heartbreaking to see but you learn that after the fact because it was the medications that she was giving and ended up like closing up her throat and she ended up starving to death. So it was like a horrible com mm. conversation, but you know, these are the type of people that are coming out of the woodwork now. And so there people are more open to trying things naturally where you're not going to have the devastating side effects. And that's what we're going to bring to the table on no on November 3rd. And like uh, Ann Lori, that's the that's the 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 latest count that we just had, that was from Eventbrite. She said 175. Oh my gosh, 175. Now, some of them are the same on the Facebook page, but the but I saw to, like 24 people signed up in the last like week. So, you know, just to make your life easier, if you want to, go to Let There Be Health um, on Facebook. And right when you click on it, you'll see a little black thing that says register here. And it brings you right to Eventbrite. And then you'll just, you know, fly right through the registration and, and you know, get early to get your seat. To it's make sure free. It's yeah, it's free. free. It's We're free. looking for a head count so that we have, you know, enough chairs, enough food. What, you know, we just are looking for the head count. So please, please register. So we have about 20 minutes left. I do want to say something because as I'm listening to you guys talk, especially you, Paula, we have another caller. Let's take it. Sorry about that. No. Hello? Phone caller? Yes, hi. This is Danita. Hello, oh, Danita. Oh, hi, Danita. <laughs> hey, y'all. How are y'all? We're, We're doing good. Good. Oh, y'all. Oh, I, I love, love your accent. Please talk. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, baby? <laughs> you, you know, I'm did, good. Did, I, I have no idea where y'all are at right now. Okay, are you on your way here? No, um, I I am halfway between there and Princeton, so there's no way I can make it in that. Okay. All right, oh, that's all right. We're glad that you're on the phone because I kind of did talk about you a little bit because I didn't know whether you were going to be able to call in or not. But you know, we we just went up and down the table and introduced ourselves and said who we are, what you know, what we're excited about. So if you want to do that, or go go for it. Yes, absolutely. Um, okay. Yep. Um, I, I can do a quick intro. Okay. Um, I'm Danita, and as I, I've been told, um, 
Paula already shared with y'all that I am speaking at the Let There Be Health conference, mm -hmm. and I'll be sharing my story about how I lived and recovered from post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, I was recently a part of the cast in the This Is My Brave Philadelphia show where I shared my story and looking to do a similar show here in New Jersey. And that's really all I have to say for now. Um, no, no, we're really excited about that, Danita. Um, because, yeah. yeah, yeah, I mean, because we're trying to cover all the bases at, at Let There Be Health, you know, and mental illness is really big. So huge. It's, huge. It, it, it's so huge. I, 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 somebody just told me today about uh, somebody who's, uh, oh, it was when I was getting my hair done, somebody's kid, like, you know, committed suicide. I, I mean, you're hearing this way too often. Mm. And, you know, oh, you're not in your right I, mind if you're willing to take your life. So people really need... To, to get a handle on things, and your story is so fantastic for people to come out and hear because it eventually it ended up being something natural that helped you. Well, absolutely, and I talk about suicide in my story. I mean, that's, that's a big part of my story and yeah. how I survived a suicide attempt. Mm. Um, and I was just reading yesterday on the, I can't think of the name of it at the moment, but it was saying that suicide is, is often when stressors exceed coping skills. Mm -hmm. And that is something that I, I could not agree with more. Um, and prevention is really about reinforcing those coping skills and, and just really focusing on staying healthy because those stressors do come, those triggers happen. I, I mean, I, I, I experienced them recently, mm. but I have those coping skills in place, and so they make that time bearable so that it doesn't become an issue. Uh, yeah, because daily, daily we'll get a stressor thrown at us, and if we don't have the coping skills, you know, we're going to go downhill quick. So um, that's what we want to teach people some coping skills and we have some community partners there that are going to be able to do that and if, if no one realizes Danita is also part of our planning committee so as you can see I really surrounded myself with some really great women and um, I, and I, I, I couldn't be happier with my my committee they kept me they kept me on track <laughs> Wow beautiful it's really been awesome to be a part of this. I, I love watching Paula's story unfold. Um, I don't know if you shared with y'all, but um, she and I met at a writing group. And she was working on her book at the time. And I was in the beginning process of writing my story as well, which I'm still working on. Um, fingers crossed I can knock it out by the end of the year. Um, you can but do it. You can do it, Danita. I, I'm I'm in a good groove now, so we're so hopefully that the end is in sight now. But that's it's been really cool seeing all the work that you've been doing since you've completed that book, and it's it's just been amazing and inspiring. Well, you know, a, a book is like your is the new uh, business card now, and basically, I, you know, I went through all the trouble of of writing that book, and as you know, and I know, or anybody who's written a book, it's not easy, uh, no. but you know, I, it's it is a way to get your story out there, and and that's it because of the book. Uh, let there be health ended up happening so who knows what's going to be in store for next year for the, because it's my goal for the rest of my life to let people know that there are choices when it comes to their health care and to choose wisely choose wisely choose wisely so yep wow. uh, absolutely I, I that's something that i i wholeheartedly believe in now um having choices and believing in those choices um I, that's something that it's been part of my story is not always knowing what to do and it was really when I took control of my own mental health and the treatment that I wanted mm. um, as opposed to what I was told I needed mm -hmm. yeah. um, is where I really started to turn things around in my own life right it's yeah keeping keeping control and a lot of people don't 
they give their tr control away immediately and just do whatever the doctor tells them to do. And some, you know, hey, I'm not putting doctors down. There, there's a reason for them all to be here too. But there is an agenda out there now. I mean, our healthcare system is in, in a shambles, really. And there, all the the lobbyists are pharmaceutical companies. And, you know, you do what the person who's giving you the most money uh, tells you to do. And uh, uh, that's, that could be an issue. It is an issue. Yeah. Um, I have a question for you before we close. We're going to be closing soon. I have a question for you. Um, what was your aha moment that made you realize you can do this? D Danita, I think she's talking to you. Yes. Um, for me, um, as in what? But when I decided, whenever I realized I could turn my life around. Yes, that, that you what, were in control. Is that what you're wondering yes. about? Yes. Um, for me, it was, I was taking care of an aunt um, who had cancer. And she, she wasn't able to cope with what was happening with her. And at the time, I was in a pretty bad place myself. Um, I had really given up hope at that point that I was ever going to get better. I'd been going to therapists and doctors for years and just couldn't get the, the treatment that I actually needed. Um, I kept getting misdiagnosed, but with my aunt, um, I saw what she was doing, and I had to sober up to take care of her, and that was really eye-opening just to do that and then it and then it really it hit me that if I didn't figure out a way to get better and and find that hope again that I was going to end up just like her and that was that was just not acceptable to me I, I couldn't imagine living the rest of my life being miserable and that's what I was at the time um, and so that's really whenever I, I dug in and started doing research again and found what I needed and and well, here I am now. <laughs> so um, it was that's really that was my aha moment was was seeing what my life could be like if I didn't get get my act together. So I I'm gonna say thank you first of all for calling in. Second of all, thank you for telling us your story and thank you for being a part of this. Um, I want to comment on what you said because everyone out there who's listening. If any of you struggle with mental illness at all, whether it's a little bit a lot, if you're on meds, if you're struggling with it, I'm going to say two things to you. Number one, get off of all sugar, first and foremost, because your brain cannot distinguish the difference between sugar and opiates. They think you're doing a drug. And everyone in this country is addicted to sugar, unfortunately, because it's in most of the food. So having said that, I want, to, I want you to understand what she said. She made a choice. She realized she had to make a choice to make a change. Mm. See, that's where, the, where, where you are powerful. You are not powerless. That's where that comes in with anything in your life, whether it's abuse, whether it's disease, whether it's Ill, mental illness, right, Paula? Whatever it is, whatever is going on in your life today, I'm here to tell you, you are not powerless. So I'm going to have these ladies say one last thing they want to say to everyone out there. And then I'm going to close and thank you all for listening. Jerry, you got one more call too. Okay. So you got both calls online. Okay. Okay, Danita, I guess we're going to say goodbye because there's another okay, call yeah. online. Bye, Danita. Thank you thank so much. Thank you. Bye, thanks. Bye, Danita. Bye, y'all. Thanks for having me on. Bye bye. Hello, caller. Bye. Hi, this is Marcia from Tales of Wellness. Sounds like <laughs> I'm at the end of the rope there, but. I like what I walked in on. Okay, Hi. well, well listen, I'm so glad you called in. We, we are at the end of it, but I did give you a shout out already. Um, awesome. So, but t t talk a little bit about yourself. Yeah, I'll give you two minutes, girlfriend, do it. <laughs> two minutes, fast. Well, you started off with the word empowerment is what I heard. Yep. And in a big old nutshell, that's what I'm about. I'm about empowering pet, pet, pet parents <laughs> and the pets themselves. I so through intuitive uh, communication and wellness, consultations we work together we partnership together to find solutions um, you know my main thing is listening to the clients needs and concerns and then making some big changes in the world 
That's beautiful. How's that? Did That's, I wrap it up in two minutes? That was beautiful. You, you did great. You did great, Marsha. <laughs> beautiful. Thank oh, you, Marsha. Sorry, I missed the fun, but you know what? <laughs> we're going to be live. On, be we're live on, on November third. No, but we're live on Facebook. So share this video, everyone out there. If we've touched you even a little bit, share this video, please. Okay. Yeah, you, we want to get the word out about this conference first and foremost. So we're going to be live. It's going to stay there. Please share it. Thank you for calling in, sweetheart. You got it. All right. Fabulous, guys. Take care. Have a fabulous night. Thank, Thank you, thanks. too. You can watch this Bye. on Facebook, Marsha. Yeah. Yep. So yep. why don't we start yeah, with you? I Tell everyone. Call, uh, I have to call the kitty person. So <laughs> have a great night, and I'll talk to you guys soon. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye start with you. Tell everyone what you would like to say to, as you end this. I just want to thank you for having us on the show, oh, Jerry. And uh, this is Deborah Perry signing off. Hope to see you all at the Let There Be Health Conference on November 3rd between 1 and 5 o'clock uh, at St. Anthony's of Padua in Heightstown. Right. Um, be there or be square. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Go ahead. Hi, everyone. This is Mary Teresa Weil. Um, I want to thank you um, for listening to us, for watching us, and thank you, Jerry. Oh, thank you, Paula, and uh, for including us in this yeah. great success story that you have and again i'm very proud of you but very proud of everything you've done so everybody come to the conference november 3rd you won't be sorry you'll ask, actually you'll have a really good time i promise thank you well, and, and basically i just want to let everyone know that miracles happen every day you just have to be open to it and when you start looking for them they're going to abound so that's what i want to end with expect miracles well i want to say thank you to you ladies this was an amazing enlightening show um i can't wait to be part of this conference um everybody out there i'm going to read a poem at the end of my book because this is powerful and, and it's not just about addiction it's about anything you're struggling with in life anything okay abuse anything we are here to help you you can reach out to us you are not powerless Change, your choice, you have choices, guys. I had a life-changing moment that I knew had to be. The only way to change things was to first start with me. So I looked in the mirror and woke up one day and thought to myself I needed to pray. So I asked God to change me, to help me stay strong, to clean up my mess, to right what's been wrong. I cleaned up my diet, I cleaned up my room, I cleaned up all habits with this old dirty broom. I kept going forward and never looked back. I refused to derail. I stayed on the right track. I realized my worth and all that did matter through my selfish behavior to lives I had shattered. I finally decided at 30 years old to stop abusing my body, my mind, heart, and soul. My life-changing choice that I had once made, it's over 27 years now, my debt has been paid. So you read all my thoughts on how to stay clean. It's all or nothing, my friend. There's no in-between. To live or to die is a choice you must make. Your life is not worthless. You're not a mistake. One day at a time is a slogan you've heard. It works if you work it while applying his word. For you to get healthy, for your mind not to fail, escaping reality will keep you in jail. With addictive behavior, sex, drugs, food, or money, substituting addictions, now isn't that funny. I'm not an addict. This too shall pass. I'm not an addict. I'm just an ass. May the good Lord bless and guide you. Amen. Good night, everybody. Amen. Very nice. Well, good show. Yeah, that went nice. That went nice and smooth. But are we really?